Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. The future of helicopter transport is here with comically large rotors and... Oh wait, hold on. Is this a plane or a helicopter? Well, actually, my friends, this is called a coaxial helicopter, and being as fast as an aeroplane is just the beginning. It's far more stable, can carry more, and is nearly invisible on radar. And it's the latest specialty dish from the kitchen of legendary Sikorsky and Boeing, with a chef kiss dash from Lockheed Martin. And it's so good that it went head to head against Bell's V22 2.0 for the replacement of the legendary Blackhawk. But despite ticking all of the boxes with celebrity parents, it failed to win the hearts and minds of the US military. This leaves us asking, is this aircraft a strong competitor for the future of the Army and the Marine Corps, or just another museum piece of a what-if world? Let's find those answers, spin up the rotors, and climb aboard the SB-1 Defiant. Why was the SB-1 such a cutting-edge aircraft? Regular helicopter design suffers from two fatal flaws, slow and unstable. With a speed of around 350 to 400 kilometers per hour, the fastest helicopters in the world are slower than pretty much any aeroplane. On the other hand, a helicopter requires a tail rotor because while spinning, the main rotor creates a counterforce pushing the fuselage in the other direction, and that the tail rotor is needed to counter that force and allow for stability in flight. You lose the tail rotor, you're spinning uncontrollably and falling down hard. The Soviet Karmov Bureau were the first to solve this problem with coaxial rotor designs on their helicopters. By having a second rotor spinning in the opposite direction on top, you eliminate the force pushing against the fuselage, and as a bonus, you also have slightly more lift. This design also removes the tail rotor out of the equation and makes the aircraft much safer and much more maneuverable. That's imbalance fixed, but the issue of speed persists. The British have tried with their Rotodyne, as well as the Soviets with their Car 22, to incorporate both rotors and engines that would push the aircraft forward, breaking that speed barrier. But their solution was inefficient, complicated, and still not fast enough. However, in the late 1970s, Sikorsky had an idea that would solve both of these issues, and that idea came to life as the XH-59. This helicopter was a game changer when it came to aircraft design, seemingly removing all the previous flaws of rotor aircraft forever. But despite their best efforts, the engineers struggled to get enough attention for their amazing new aircraft, something they could have prevented with a Squarespace website. But hold on, don't skip this as part as I've got some sneak peeks for future videos. You see, a Squarespace website starts with best-in-class design templates, where you can customize every design detail with reimagined drag-and-drop technology for desktop and mobile, so you don't actually have to make two sites. You can stretch your imagination online with their Fluid Engine, built in and ready to go on any new Squarespace site. But that's not all, because every Squarespace website also has a built-in shop to start selling right away, and you can use the campaign marketing tools that they include to start driving business instantly. Seriously, Squarespace is the secret recipe that I use for my own online store at www.foundandexplain.shop. So, thanks Squarespace! Lift yourself up to new heights and support the channel and get more videos just like this and 10% off your first site and domain at www.squarespace.com slash found. By combining coaxial rotor design with additional jet engines, one could get an extremely fast but also stable and safe aircraft, and this is exactly what Sikorsky did. Powered by one turboshaft engine for the rotors and two additional turbojets, the XH-59, also known as the S-69, <laughs> could reach the speed of up to 487 km per hour. It was stable in flight, and in case of engine failure, it could still use its coaxial rotors to land safely. 
But even though they had solved two problems, the result had created a third. Three engines, out of which two were turbojets, would guzzle fuel very fast, and the range was then very limited on a helicopter of small dimensions. There wasn't any room to add a bigger fuel tank. Therefore, the project was put in a drawer and left to gather dust for a long time, nearly 30 years to be exact. But then, the US Army came knocking and said, we want a new helicopter, and we want a lot of them. And yes, you know the engineers had dollar signs in their eyes and pulled out their favorite money-making design. The US government had started something called the Future Vertical Lift Program. The FVL program would be the biggest contract issued by the US Army and the Marines in the last 50 years. Its goal was to create a series of new helicopters which were going to perform both combat, transport, and recce reconnaissance roles, all whilst sharing as many components as possible. As part of that program, the military was also intending to retire the legend itself, the UH-60 Blackhawk, and replace it with this new aircraft. The military thus turned to two of the very best helicopter manufacturers in the States, Bell with their V-280 Valor concept, and Sikorsky, now under the Lockheed management paired with Boeing to create this new state-of-the-art helicopter. Sikorsky Boeing brought to the table the SB-1 Defiant, and while they claimed it to be a completely original design, we know that it's pretty much based off the S-69 from the 70s and their subsequent X-2 prototype, although there are some major changes. The size of the aircraft is not much larger than the Black Hawk, although it is powered by two 5000 HP engines giving it some 50% more power than the Black Hawk. The coaxial rotor design also removes the need for the tail rotor, but there is now a pusher propeller right there, giving the helicopter a much higher maximum speed. This propeller is powered by the same engines powering the main rotors, the Honeywell T-55s, the same ones that were used on the Chinook. And not to spoil anything, these engines were actually just a temporary solution. But I'll get to that in a second. Looking inside, we can see that the fuselage is more spacious than the Black Hawk, and therefore much more optimized as a medivac or troop carrier. The SB-1 also had fly-by-wire controls and a very modern cockpit with large MFDs and a crew of four, a pilot, a co-pilot, and two gunners. The design itself resembles an aeroplane much more than a helicopter with a streamlined fuselage and large horizontal control surfaces and movable tails acting as rudders. Flash forward to 2019, the SB-1 took to the skies for the first time and it was actually very good. Dozen of tests were carried out, including the emergency scenario where one engine was shut down and the helicopter performed with flying colors showing great maneuverability, safety, and performing well, even in low altitude tests. It had a maximum speed of 465 kilometers per hour, which was the minimum program requirements for the army. But it wasn't just the army that was buying this new helicopter, but the marines as well. And these gun-ho soldiers brought to the table some eye-watering requirements of their own. And wouldn't you know it, it was range again. Throughout this video, I've said that the SB-1's design fixed the flaws of the regular helicopter, but there was actually another solution. A tilt rotor helicopter. This was a design that was well studied and already existed. And we even had the V-22 Offspray flying in the skies by none other than rival Bell. And it was exactly this design that they brought to the program, the V-280 Valor. It was pretty much a V-22 2.0, so to speak. Learning from all the hardships and problems with the V-22, which had developed a reputation as a rather unsafe aircraft, they made this new version much better, easily breaking the 500 km per hour barrier and bringing the range to match, surpassing the requirements set even by those Marines, which was double that of the Army. The range requirements that the SB-1 struggled with. 
The Valor would have a cruising speed of 280 knots or 520 kilometers per hour, and hence the name V280. And this falls right into both the Army and the US Marine Corps' minimal requirements. But its top speed is around 550 kilometers per hour when you actually push it to the metal that meets even the most ambitious design requirements of the Marines. Sikorsky and Boeing were not going to take this lying down and were very quick to respond to these results with their own improved version of the SB-1, now called the Defiant X. They explained that these engines that they had inside the aircraft, the old T-55 ones from the Chinook, were not the ones to be used in the final design, and that the new engines on the way would give an additional 50% to both the range and the maximum speed. They would also take the time to make another change in the fuselage, incorporate hidden exhausts like on the RAH-66, lowering the thermal signature and a more angled body to somewhat reduce its radar cross-section. The landing gear was also changed to a standard tricycle scheme, however that vertical fin wheel was kept probably as an extra precaution as to not damage the fin during landing in bad weather conditions. They even overhauled the interior, getting some new flight controls from Collins Aerospace, including a brand new state-of-the-art Paragon computer, which is going to be used on many future aircraft programs. Alas, it seemed to be all for naught. The aircraft might have ticked all the boxes, but the SB-1 looked lackluster next to the Valor. The Army and Marines decided that they had found their future helicopter. But why? Why did the military choose it? The answer is actually quite simple. There is a ready solution to the V-280, unlike a possible future solution with the SB-1. The V-280 was the future today with its current engines and didn't need any new technology or engineering that were on the horizon for the SB-1. And thus, they won the contract. Sikorsky and Boeing protested this decision, but they were rejected by the Government Accountability Office. And it's rather funny when you think about it that Sikorsky fell into the classic Soviet futuristic project death spiral, where an ingenious solution is made, but due to the engines not being ready in time, the project as a whole falls into a heap. So is the SB-1 going to become a museum piece, or is there still some hope left for the project? As we mentioned, the FLV is a huge program and it branches into many different projects. That's right, it's time for round two. And believe it or not, the two competitors in the future attack reconnaissance aircraft, or FARA, are Bell and Sikorsky. Sikorsky Boeing's proposal is under the name of Radar X, a very fancy design, but it is very similar to the same design as the Defiant. Especially interesting for a combat aircraft that needs survivability as one of its important factors, something that the SB-1 shines at. Bell, of course, is coming to the table with a proposal called the Invictus. Jesus, where are they coming up with these names? Like we're in some sort of supplement store. The Invictus protein with a new 20% better formula for extra gains. Jokes aside, Invictus follows the same old helicopter design with a tail rotor and might prove inferior this time to the SB-1 derivative radar. So there is hope that the Sikorsky Boeing might get a large piece of that sweet taxpayer's cake. The SB-1 design is actually much more suitable for a smaller type of aircraft and can't really be upscaled much more. And this is another reason why its transport role might have not been the optimal one, but maybe a combat variant is the real future of this program. And honestly, I really wish I only had one. I just think it's neat. Thank you so much for watching and let me know if you want to see a story on the V280 Vela or out supplement named heroes for future combat aircraft. Until then, enjoy your week and I'll see you in the next one.